Hi again, everybody. Bruce McClure, chair of the Northern New England chapter of Sabre here. And today I have a very special guest. Jay Goldberg is here with us today, and he has a very special multimedia project that I'd like to talk to him about today. The project is called The Memory of America. Remember your first baseball game. Jay, welcome to Northern New England. How are you today? Great. Thank you so much for having me, Bruce, uh, from, from New York City at the moment. But th thanks so much. It's a pleasure to be in New England. New York City, center of the universe, <laughs> one of my favorite places in the world. As a matter of fact, I'll be going down in a couple of weeks to enjoy the New York Design Center. Maybe we'll have to get together down there at some point. Excellent. So you and I have spoken in the past about this multimedia project before, and I'd like to give our chapter up here and chapters around the country a little bit of the background on that. What do you say? Okay, so the, the name of the project, as you said, it's called The Memory of America, Remember Your First Baseball Game. It's a multimedia project. Uh, it's far reaching and layered. Uh, baseball is only the turnstile. It, that's, that just start, that gets us in the gate. And then from that point on, it's about everything else. Uh, and basically what I do is I interview people uh, in person, never by Zoom. Uh, so I interview people. I started this project. I had, as some people may know, I, I used to have a place called the Bragino Baseball Clubhouse for nine years, which was a unique baseball related shop, gallery and event space. My guess is uh, uh, some people watching this were there uh, for events that we had. Uh, so thank you. But anyway, when I closed that at, in at the end of 2018 is when I started to work on this project. So I interview people in person. The interviews take 10 minutes, 20 minutes, one time three hours, but, but usually about 20 minutes. And I then edit it to a two, two and a half minute story, roughly. Uh, and that becomes the basis of uh, where the multimedia project starts. And I'm sure we'll get into it, but I'll be coming up to, to your neck of the woods for a, uh, three months uh, working on this project. So... Uh, but that's in, in, in a brief summary, that's what the project is. Um, and it's, uh, somebody asked me once if I could describe it in one word, which is basically impossible. But uh, the word I first came up with was joy, but I've changed that. Uh, basically what the project is about is about love and in, in various forms. And I'll kind of leave it there for now. That's very, very interesting to me. You used both the word joy and love to describe this whole thing. So I'm going to springboard off that by asking you, how did you originally come up with the idea for this project? What was the genesis of it all? That's a, that's a very interesting question. And sometimes I still ask myself that. Uh, as people who may who may know, before I had the clubhouse, I had a company just called Brigino, which were these unique handmade gift baseballs that I wholesale throughout the country, including to Macy's at one point. Uh, so may, I don't know if you were there during that time, but it might have been. Yeah. Anyway, uh, there was a little insert that we put in the package. It was a little brief paragraph that I wrote about somebody remembering their first baseball game, which was kind of the standard thing of. You walk up the tunnel and you see this, this beautiful diamond in front of you, uh, which is the story a lot of people tell. And, um, and then when I opened the clubhouse, I put that exact, people love that paragraph for some reason, it resonated. And I, I put it on our point of sale uh, custom display that we had. So it was there, but I wrote that originally in 2001, just as part of the packaging. And then it stayed from that point all the way through the clubhouse years. So obviously this project was somewhere deep inside of me, but I didn't realize it. Uh, and that, so it went back. I don't even know where it goes back to, to be honest. It probably goes back to my dad uh, in conversations with my dad as a child. But when I closed the clubhouse, when I had enough of retail, uh, that's when I decided I was going to do this full blast and see where, where it took me. But I think it, it, it was always inside. There was never like a moment like, oh, I had this idea. Let me do this. 
I think it was kind of there. And like many things in life, I was pulled along. It was, you know, I, I was kind of just the, the, the jockey on the horse trying to get that horse to the finish line, you know? So that's, uh, I think that's what happened. And it's a good, it's an interesting question. I don't have a better answer than that, unfortunately. That's actually a terrific answer. A lot of art doesn't necessarily have that aha moment of, oh, I'm going to do this for the rest of my life, or I'm going to do this for my next project. It gets thought of over time and eventually blossoms into something like this. And then I start thinking about the words joy and the words love, because I equate those two words to art in general. This might sound like an odd question, but how did you come to associate those two specific words to this project that's based on sports? Yeah, it's, it's well, a couple of things. One is it's based on sports, like at the, at the lay, at the top layer where I said baseball is the, is the turnstile, the entry gate. After that, it's not based on it's not based on sports, which is why originally I called it Remember Your First Baseball Game. And then I turned it the, into the memory of America, Remember Your First Baseball Game. Because really what it is, it's, I have memories that go back uh, to 1938. That's my earliest uh, memory at this point, uh, a story that somebody had, uh, which was a, a former uh, a Pulitzer Prize winner. I don't wanna say more because I haven't released it yet, but it's a fantastic, it was a great interview. Uh, he's in his 90s. He's still with us, thankfully. And uh, uh, so it it's really about it. Well, in some ways, it's 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 the history of America for the last hundred years, almost uh, these memories. It takes you through through many things. And when somebody asked me that to describe it in one word, which is almost impossible, uh, I think he was just challenging me. I was at a brunch with my wife and this couple, and he's He's a storyteller by profession. That's what he does. He goes into companies, teaches them how to story tell. And this is what the guy does. So I think he was just challenging me. And I kind of thought about it and I blurted out joy at that moment uh, because that's every story kind of has that aspect to it. But then as I started thinking about it, uh, really the more appropriate word is love because there's a, I'm a Sinatra fanatic, not to get off track here, but there was once a, I, I heard Sinatra, he was introducing this new song and he was, it was one of these live recordings. And he said, uh, I'm now introducing this song. It's a love song, uh, but it's also a sad song. And he said, but if you listen closely, all love songs are sad songs. And uh, these are not sad stories. I don't want to go there, but there's layers to it. So love can mean a lot of different things. Uh, and But every story that I've done, as I look back at it, every interview, love, there's been love in every single story in one way or another. Oh, that's fabulous. That's just great. I like to look at pieces like this and delve into more than just the baseball or more than just the, <clears throat> excuse me, the top layer of it all, because usually beneath those layers of the proverbial onion, you find the real meaning of the entire project. Even when going to an, a museum and you're, it's the same type of thing. You're looking at some of your favorite pieces of art, but as you're looking and you're discussing with your partner who's with you that day, you start to find more of what it means. And that's, I think, the, the essence of it right there was using baseball to springboard off that to the real meaning of the whole project, that joy and that love and that beauty that comes from within. Now, you've done this all around the country. Yes. And how uh, many, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. How many interviews have you done? I've done hundreds uh, that are, that are, that are already edited and completed. So, so hundreds and hundreds uh, already in my database, so to speak. 
Sounds like you've got more in the can that are ready to come out too. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, and it's of, of all of all ages. It's it's a cross section of of the country. Really, I try to be very diverse in all ways with the people that I interview. Uh, so it's really the the uh, it's a it's America, and there's not a lot of things like this where people have these memories of something and they just want to talk about it. That the, that caught me off guard in the beginning, to be honest, how willing they, they didn't know who I was. It's not like it was a friend or somebody I knew. I would just say, oh, I'm doing this. And they would just start talk, telling me a story. I, they had no idea who I was. Th that caught me off guard in, in, in the beginning. But then I realized there was something to that. And there's not a lot of things like that uh, of, of a subject where I could walk up to anybody basically and say, this is what it is. Do you have a story? Even if they don't think they have a story, they do. Sometimes they, they, they don't think they have one, but everybody has a story, even if they don't realize it. Baseball is so intertwined with Americana and it's so synonymous with American summer and our history that it's touched so many of us. I'm not surprised that folks just kind of start telling you those stories as you understand, as they understand more about your project and what you're doing. I know that I have friends who don't even like baseball, believe it or not. I have friends who don't like baseball, <laughs> who when I, I've I've spoken about this project with them and they look at me and say, wow, you know, I remember when, and they start talking about this one baseball game they went to when they were knee high to a grasshopper and they can still be, feel those emotions and feel that, that, that joy or whatever they felt when they saw it for the first time. So it's very interesting that you're bringing this out of such a large cross section of people from very young to, as you said, you had someone who was over 90 years old that you did an interview with. That's really something that brings people together. Yeah, that's absolutely. The best parts of the project. Yeah, it does. It does. It is. That's a big part of it is bringing people together, empathy of people that you may not think you have anything in common with and you realize you do. And to be honest, some of the best stories I've gotten have been people who would say they don't really like baseball oh, wow. and they've been to one game in their life. And that's the story they tell. Those, some of the st uh, stories are, and the memories are really emotional and, and fascinating in some ways different from somebody who's like us, uh, baseball fanatics for a lifetime. And, uh, that that was also a part that that caught me off guard. The people who like I don't really like baseball. You know, I only went one time, and uh, or they you know, I don't even remember. Did I go? And then they oh yeah, I did go to a game once. And then they start we start talking about it. Those are amazing stories when, when things start coming back to them. Because because what happens with this process is we start, and then memories just come back that people have not thought about in decades. In, in 50 years, it could be. They haven't thought about these things. That's how memory works. All of a sudden, memory, certain memories are just unlocked and coming back to you. And people get, I, I had somebody who, who just broke down uh, recently in an interview saying, and at the end saying, you know, don't make me cry. And she started crying. And then she said, she like thanked me for bringing these memories back to her that she had not thought about for about 40 years related to her dad. And, uh, you know, so those are some, obviously some of the best moments, you know, for me. That's, that, that, that's, that's beautiful. That's just, yeah. Wow. wow. I, you know, I look, I, I, I read a similar project to yours and I'm, that's walking out onto a limb right now called uh, Humans of New York. And I, I'm sure you've heard of that. Many, of, yes. many of you out there who are watching this today have probably heard of it. A gentleman whose name I cannot remember, he goes out with a camera and he takes pictures of 
the humans of New York and gets a little story behind each of those pictures. And it's kind of the same thing here. And I'm, I'm understanding a little bit more as I equate the two of just how the joy and the beauty and the love come about because you can see it pop off the screen in projects, other projects like Humans of New York. And this one does the same thing just in a interview format. Yeah, for me, it's very important to do the interview format. I believe he photographs people and then right. transcribes their story or you know does part of their story. For me, it's very important. The way the interviews work is I set up a little old iPhone 5S camera uh, with a little mini tripod to the side and you forget about it. And then we just talk, we just talk. And it's, it, but I, I need to be in person with, with, with somebody. Uh, I, I feel to do a good job with the interview. I'm not, you don't see me, you don't hear me. It's all you. And it's all, all it is, is this, you know, just like kind of we're looking now, I don't do special effects and cut in things. And to me, that's where all the power is in the story. And uh, I used to work many years ago before I was uh, doing things in baseball and as a sports agent, I used to work in politics for a big political consultant and pretty much everything I'm doing now is based on things that we used to do when I worked in politics uh, on these campaigns that's kind of where it comes from which is ironic because that is you're dealing also with with similar themes across America uh, and a cross-section of Americans and but going out and just talking to people and that's that's real and letting them tell their stories and then when I say I edit it just to be clear, this is not oral history. My, my understanding, I could be wrong, but my understanding of oral history is it's transcribed and you're not supposed to touch it. It's whatever they say is what they say. I don't do that. You, you and I would speak for 20 minutes or so. No, I've had this happen two times in all the interviews I've done. Somebody tells a story from start there's a start, a middle, an end. I don't edit it in one minute. This has happened two times. Uh, so people don't tell stories like that. So I edit it to turn it into a story. You say something at the end that becomes the first line of the story or, or whatever it may be. And then we edit out the, 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 the middle 18 minutes. There was nothing there, you know. So... Uh, that that's how that's how I do the project. It's how I, I feel comfortable doing it. Um, and I would never in any, you know, the one thing I will not do is I will never, ever make anybody look bad. Or if there's something that they've said that I think, you know, if a family member sees this, this may cause an issue. I edit it out. It's just a decision I made. And it's not what this is about. So I will never. Uh, do anything in any way where there could be a negative aspect of this to to the person who is just willing to talk to me. I, I just I won't do it. That doesn't yeah. happen often, but it has happened. It's where uh, the love comes in. It's where the love comes in. <laughs> now you're coming to New Hampshire. Yes. Tell me about that. I can't wait. It's coming up. So. Uh, I'm, I'm an artist in residence at a place called the Factory on Willow in Manchester, New Hampshire. I, I'm their summer artist in residence. I'll be there for three months, June, July, and August. So basically, June and July, I will be devoting to as many interviews as I can get. So I would obviously love to get as many Sabre members as I can uh, to, to interview for this particular uh, artist residency because the proposal that I offered them was I would not use, when you asked how many interviews I've done, all the interviews I've done up to now are useless for this project because I will not be using any of them uh, in Manchester. It will only be people I interview in Manchester. So it's called the Memory of America Manchester, remember your first baseball game. I'll be interviewing people uh, June and July, and then they've already given me the date. Thursday, August 17th is the public installation and exhibition, which is obviously open to the public in Manchester as well. 
So obviously I can get all those details to people. I would love to have people come. And anybody who I interview, I will promise one way or another will be featured in the installation in some aspect. So uh, whoever would like to get interviewed in Manchester in June and July, I would love it. Uh, and that that's where I'll be. It's a live work studio. Uh, I was already up there for five days doing advance work, I guess, in a throwback to my days as an advanced man in politics. So uh, I already, I've done a lot of groundwork. I already actually interviewed six people uh, when I was up there. And uh, so I can't wait to get to, get to Manchester uh, coming up. Now, folks are going to have to go to you. Is that correct? They have to, yeah. Part of, I, I can't really go to like Boston, interview somebody and come back. You know, uh, unfortunately for the way the project is set up, I need to interview them in, in Manchester or close enough. It could be Bedford or, you know, surrounding area there, but I, I can't, I can't go to Boston or, or, you know, Burlington, Vermont or, you know, something. Uh, they, they do need to come to Manchester, but I do promise for anyone who doesn't live in Manchester, in addition to uh, guaranteeing a great time in the interview, it'll be my treat coffee, a drink, breakfast, lunch, whatever you'd like, depending upon your schedule, it's my treat for, for coming to Manchester. Uh, you know, I could probably give you a few uh, recommendations on diners and coffee shops out there. So uh, send them along. <laughs> Never met a breakfast I didn't like. All right, man, me too. <laughs> when exactly are you going to be here? When are, when's your first day? June 1st is the day I have, I drive up and move in. So I'll be there June 1st through the end of August, but August 17th is actually, as of now, the installation. Hopefully they will allow me to do more than one installation. I'm hoping to do more than one public uh, exhibition throughout this process, but I don't know that yet. But basically I start June 1st and I would say through mid-July, uh, most days I will be conducting interviews. Uh, so that that's the schedule. Uh, yes. And then we could figure out a place. Uh, obviously, I, I arrange that individually with people where we do the, the interviews, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's in my live work studio, it's outside. It could be anywhere. It, I've done interviews anywhere. This, the, the, this is fantastic stuff. I'm, I'm glad to be able to publicize this a little bit for you. I would like to urge any of our chapter members here in New Hampshire, Maine, and the Gardner Waterman chapter out in Vermont, you're not that far away, guys. Let's get involved with this. This is such a unique and beautiful project. It's Americana at its finest. It's honestly the essence of what the Society for American Baseball Research is about. It's about baseball and connection to the world around us. And Jay Goldberg, you've done such an amazing job with this project displaying just how those memories are part of both our personal history and our collective history that I can't wait to see what you're gonna be doing up here in New Hampshire this summer. And I wanna thank you for doing this interview today and helping me to get the word out throughout Northern New England. So thanks a lot, Jay, this has been terrific. Oh, thank you so much, Bruce. And uh, I really appreciate your time and your enthusiasm. And you and I have, uh, have met a, quite a few times over this uh, format, but I cannot wait until I meet you in Manchester. We'll figure out the day that's best for you and it's my treat at whatever diner you come up with. If I don't know if it's Red Arrow or one of these other ones. It's one but of them. That's one of them. <laughs> I had a feeling. You know, I was already there in my research. Nice. Uh, yeah. I don't want to say who's, who's, uh, seat I sat at. You know, they had the little plaques of uh, oh, which politicians okay. sat there. I, you know, I don't want to offend anybody. So, uh, but anyway. <laughs> Uh, I look forward to meeting you in person, and I really appreciate all of this. And I, the more saber saberites that want to come to Manchester, the better for me. So I, I would love to to really interview as many saber members as possible. Well, hopefully, we're going to clog up the streets of Manchester with some saberites <laughs> and whatnot. 
uh, in the coming months. The project is entitled, and I'm going to correct myself now, Jay, The Memory of America, uh, Manchester, Remembering Your First Baseball Game. Jay's going to be in New Hampshire beginning June 1st. We're going to put down in the comment section in, of our uh, video today all the information you're going to need to get in touch with Jay so that you can become part of this project. And if you have any friends who are baseball fans who would like to get involved in this as well, it's not just Sabre members that can do this. It's just general baseball fans who have that memory, who'd like to share it and be part of this project. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity to be a part of a wonderful, beautiful story of Americana and baseball. Jay Goldberg, I want to thank you for coming up to Northern New England today virtually and wish you the biggest success in this project. And yes, I look forward to meeting you in person very, very soon. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you for everything. I, I, I truly appreciate it. My pleasure, my friend. We'll see you soon. Great. Thank you.